Hello again. Welcome back to Eclipse and Java for Total Beginners. In the last two lessons, we created JUnit tests for our person class. In this lesson, we're going to create a two-string method for our person class using test-driven development. One important goal of agile software development is to tightly integrate testing into the software development process. In test-driven development, the unit tests serve as the detailed program specifications and are actually written before the methods to be tested. This may seem very odd at first, but many developers find that this method offers significant advantages over the more traditional approach. Eclipse, as we'll see, has some great features to support test-driven development. Before we start coding, let's briefly discuss the toString method, which is the one we'll be writing. This is a method that all Java classes inherit from the object class. The toString method allows us to print out a string representation of an object. Now let's go to the scrapbook briefly to see what this method does. We'll go up to the Package Explorer. We'll expand our package. Double click the scrapbook to open the scrapbook page. And then we'll double click this to give us some room. Now if your scrapbook doesn't have this already in it from last time, go ahead and just type in uh, the first couple lines here. And then we're going to say p.2 string and we'll leave off the semicolon because we'll we can just inspect this. We'll come up here, hit inspect, and the scrapbook will execute that. I'm going to expand this a little bit. And we can see that the two string right now is saying org total beginner tutorial person, which is the full name of our class, and then it's got an at sign and a hex number. Now this method works, but it isn't as helpful as it could be. And that's because, of course, we're using the toString method from the object class, and the object class has no way of knowing anything about our person class. So it's doing the best it can, but it's not really as helpful as we'd like. Whenever we create a new class, we normally want to change the toString method to better represent the objects of our specific class. And this is an example of overriding a method. When we change a method we've inherited from a super class, that's overriding. So we'll replace the method toString from the super class with a method that we write for our class. Now at this point, we could go right to the person class and start writing code. But instead, we're going to think about what we want our toString method to do. Then we're going to write a test case that will tell us if the method is working correctly. Only after we have the test case done will we write the toString method in the person class. That's test-driven development. So we're done with the scrapbook and we'll hit the stop evaluation button and then we'll get started writing our test case. Now we want to add a new method called test to string. And we can add the method anywhere. I'm going to add it at the end. Of course, we need to make sure we add it bef above the closing curly brace. So I'm going to add the method. I'm going to use key assist. It returns void. The name is test to string. Whoops. Now, to get started, we're going to create a new person object. And let's go ahead and set the name and the number of books, just so we know for sure what's in there. So we'll set the name to Red Flintstone and set the maximum number of books to 7. Now, what do we want the toString method to do? Well, for this example, let's have it print out the person's name and then print the number of books in parentheses. So we'll create a string variable 
to hold the desired output. So we'll type string test string equals Fred Flintstone seven books. And now we'll use the assert equals method. to make sure that test string equals p4 to string. So let's look at this for a moment. Not only do we have a test method, we also have in effect a detailed specification of what our two string method needs to do. Another programmer somewhere down the road could look at this code and very easily see that the toString method needs to print the name followed by the number of books in parentheses. What's more, this specification will very likely remain accurate. If somebody changes the toString method and, do, and forgets to change the test method, the test will fail the next time the unit test is run. So this points out a major advantage of test-driven development. The unit tests document what the method does without having to maintain separate specifications that are very likely to become out of date. Now that we have our test written, let's run it. So we'll double click, go over here to the J unit, press the rerun test, and not surprisingly, the test to string has failed. So at this point, we know exactly what we need to do. Let's open the person class. If it's not already open, we can go to the package explorer, open source, and double click on the person, and then we'll double click here to maximize it. And now we can get to work. Now we can put the methods in any order we want in the class. We'll add the toString method to the end of the person class, taking care to place it after the previous method's closing curly brace and before the closing curly brace for the class. So now we'll create the toString method. Use the code assist. The return type is string. The name is toString. Couple tabs, and I'm in the method body. And now we're going to say return this get name plus parentheses plus this get maximum books plus books and close the parentheses. To review, remember that the keyword this just refers to the current object. So this dot get name just returns the name from the current person object. Now we could have used this dot name to return the field value instead of this dot get name using our getter method. And the same thing for maximum books. We could have just said this dot maximum books instead of this dot get maximum books. We use the get methods instead of the fields to give ourselves a little more flexibility in the future. Say for example that we decided in the future to split the name field into two fields, first name and last name. If all of our public methods use the get name method instead of referring to the fields, we could change fields behind the scene and as long as we keep the get name method compatible with our previous version, it won't affect any users of this class. Now one other very quick note, if we go up here and look at this little symbol, it's telling us that we're overriding the object to string method. So let's give it a try here. We'll double click to get back Go back to the J unit and we'll rerun the test. Now it still fails, so let's take a look and see what's the matter. We'll compare actual with expected. 
and it looks like we forgot a couple spaces. There's supposed to be a space there and there just before the parentheses and just after the 7 and we forgot to put those in. So we will click OK, go back to the person, we will add a space before the parentheses and a space before the word books. And we'll try it again. And this time it succeeds. So we wrote the method correctly now. In this lesson, we've tried out using test-driven development in Eclipse. By writing the test first, we had to decide exactly what our two-string method should do before we started coding it. The test-to-string method serves as a precise specification for the two-string method as well as for a test. Finally, we knew that the method was finished when it passed the test. In the next lesson, we'll continue work on our lending library example by writing our book class and we'll continue using the test-first approach. This is the end of Lesson 6. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.